By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against a player we've seen uh, on this channel before. His name is Hank, and you can actually find him on Instagram. And his handle is HW underscore MTG. So then you can find him there if you have any questions about his deck. Because he is playing with the Stasis Vault deck. And this deck is very similar to Edwin's build, Edwin the Magic Engineer, uh, called Temporal Stasis. But there are some differences. Now, um, what these decks have in common is that they have, in my opinion, the same key cards. And the first key card, obviously, here is Time Vault. Uh, this is the artifact that says tap to gain an additional turn after the current one and time vault doesn't untap during the untap phase to untap it you must skip a turn time vault begins tapped and when you combine this time fold card with stasis uh, you have a very interesting situation going because stasis says players do not get an untap phase and pay one blue during your upkeep or stasis is destroyed so usually the problem when you're playing with stasis is that you need enough blue mana to keep paying the upkeep cost. Now the nice thing is that when you have Time Vault in play, you can say, you know what, I'm going to untap Time Vault and I'm going to give my an opponent an extra turn. Now your opponent is not going to be able to do anything with that turn because of Stasis, because Stasis has locked the game completely. So your opponent is getting a worthless turn. As a matter of fact, when the Time Vault Stasis player has a Black Vice in play, it even means double damage. Now the com combo of these two cards actually gets even better because then when you get the turn back and you cannot pay the Stasis upkeep cost, um, you know, Stasis is destroys itself. And the problem here is that you're completely tapped out and there's this chance that your opponent is going to be the first one to untap and probably your opponent will have a full hand as well. Now this is kind of the stasis player nightmare. Now the great thing is that you've untapped your time vault earlier so you can simply tap it again and after that um, turn where you lost your stasis, you get an extra turn. So now you're the one who gets to upkeep, uh, gets to untap first instead of your opponent. So it's, it's really amazing. You're probably gonna see that happen uh, during this game as well if the uh, Time Vault Stasis deck is is gonna work. Now an obvious card in this deck is Twiddle. Twiddle is, Twiddle is great because Twiddle is a guaranteed free extra turn. Obviously the combo here, it's pretty well known, it's pretty obvious. You play your Twiddle on Time Vault so you don't have to give your uh, opponent an extra turn to untap it, but you do get to tap it again and take an extra turn. So basically here, wh when you have Time Vault, on the battlefield and you have a twiddle in hand the twiddle is just an instant time walk so how cool is that time walk itself is already an insane insanely powerful card but when you have a twiddle you have actually four time walks in your deck plus the original time walk and we all know that time vault is no longer restricted i believe that uh, my opponent today is playing with three time volts i could be wrong but i believe it's three so that means he has a pretty big chance of actually finding a time vault and playing it out and, and using those twiddles. Now, actually, the most important card to get all of this madness going, in my opinion, is the Howling Mine. So the Howling Mine is really a card you have to look out for when you're playing against decks like this. Um, you really have to try to get rid of the Howling Mine as fast as possible. Now, let's take a look at my uh, deck. I'm playing the Blue Budget deck today. Now, this is a pretty bad picture actually off the uh, <laughs> off the deck but i'm sure you'll recognize the artwork here if you'd like to know more about this deck um i've actually have a pretty uh, extensive explanation about you know the choices i've made in this deck and the cards that i play in this deck and you can click on the info card that's appearing right now and that will take you to that match where you can uh, learn more about this deck it's actually pretty straightforward it's a blue budget aggro build so that's what i'm using here to take on the a stasis vault deck of my opponent. So let's go to the games and uh, see what happens. Game number one with Hank on the play and look at that, there's a Tundra I believe and a Mox Ruby into a Howling Mine. So that's that Howling Mine that I talked about in the introduction and uh, it's a dangerous one. And I'm playing here a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, also playing with four Lord of Atlantis. So hopefully I can find that one as well. So I have a 2-2 next turn. And let's see what uh, Hank can do against this. Playing a City of Brass. 
and playing a time walk. So taking an extra turn. And this is kind of what I'm afraid of, that Howling Mine is fueling his hand in his combo pieces, but he has to pass though. And playing at second island, attacking here with the Pearl Trident, just dealing one damage. So I probably don't have a Lord of Atlantis or I would have played it already. And I have to actually discard a card here. Oh, that's not great. When you're playing an aggressive blue deck, I mean, you definitely want to just use all your mana and play creatures the first couple of turns. There's a Chaos Orb. Can I do something against this? I can counter it, actually. And will there be any response here? And no, there's not. So that takes care of the Chaos Orb. Drawing two again, playing an island and wanting to attack, but changed my mind. Okay, and I attack and deciding not to play out anything. Am I just deciding to keep my counter spells in my hand to try to counter his important pieces? Okay, interesting. So I'm playing a side blast, playing with a full play set. So maybe that's in my hand. Playing another island and Hank is already on 14 here. And there I found that Lord of Atlantis being able to attack and right now I also have two blue mana to counter or to boomerang because I also have four boomerangs in my deck. And there he goes playing a black vice. And playing that stasis. So that's that card that I'm kind of afraid of here. Will there be a counter spell? And there's actually a boomerang. Trying to boom right here on the stasis, there's not a counter spell. So it's my go again, untapping your drawing cards. And it looks like I wasn't playing any spells early game just to keep control. First having to take that damage there from the vices, so I'm going to 16. Because I'm drawing a lot of cards here. Uh, three cards every turn. Attacking here with my army, dealing four damage with the merfolk and the lord of Atlantis here. Passing turn again. It would be nice if I would get a sunken city here, kind of to make that picture complete. And Hank is under a lot of pressure, being on eight life, playing that stasis. And there's another boomerang. Look at all those boomerangs I'm drawing. Looks like my second one. Oh, and there's a mana drain. And <laughs> that is ridiculous. Another boomerang. Boomerang number three. I mean, this is just crazy. Um, I'm just finding all the boomerangs now, and, and I think this is a killer here for uh, Hank, who actually played this the right way, at least I believe, keeping that mana drain on hand to counter uh, a possible boomerang or counter spell from my side. And look at this, playing another Lord of Atlantis, and I mean, this is almost exit here for Hank, going down to two life here, because the Lord of Atlantis, they can uh, pump each other. So that means I have two 3-3 three, three Lord of Atlantis and a 3-3 three, three Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And remember, they have Island Walk, so they're unblockable. It's not very relevant in the when playing against a combo player, because they usually are very low on creatures. But still. And let's see. Oh, this is interesting. It's actually a proxy he's using for his Time Vault. That's a counter spell. So that little white card there is actually a Time Vault. And I was able to counterspell it. And obviously this is a downside. Playing that stasis again. And playing a twiddle. To tap my Lord of Atlantis down. And is he actually going to come back? I mean, he's on two life. Can he manage to come back? With these decks, I mean, when they go off, they go off. And usually you lose. So you have to kill them before they go off. And, uh... <laughs> This is crazy. Yeah, this, I remember this. I remember this. We, we talked about how crazy this was. I actually uh, drew all four of my um, boomerangs here. So obviously I'm going to boomerang the um, the stasis here and end of turn. And winning this first game. So game number one, really thanks to uh, drawing a full play set of boomerangs. And uh, we're, we're going to go to game number two. And let's see if I can be uh, just as lucky. I doubt it. Um, and let's see if, if Hank can, can manage to kind of get his lock on the table. Game number two is about to start with HW underscore MTG on the play. And that's nice. Winning with my blue budget build. Really nice here. Um, well, not winning actually. Well, winning, but winning the first game, not the match. So we're going to go into game number two. Was very lucky drawing four boomerangs. So... 
Maybe I should have shuffled better. So it kind of took my time to do that. Uh, but still that happens. And of course there were two Howling Minds on the table. So I just kept drawing good stuff. And that's that's a downside uh, for my opponent. When you're playing with Howling Minds, you're allowing obviously your opponent to draw a lot of cards. In this case, that was me. So I was finding my counter spells, uh, boomerangs, but also my creatures and my uh, Psy Blasts very easily. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen now. There's an underground scene at Tundra at the side of Hank and I have my second island here playing. Lord of Atlantis turn two, very happy here. Not seeing a counter spell, so that's nice. And there's a Black Vice on the table and followed by a Time Vault. So taking some damage here, going to 18. Not too worried yet about the Black Vice. Obviously the Time Vault is very worrying. And playing a boomerang now. There, there are there are the boomerangs again. So how many are we gonna see? I'm actually changing my mind here. And Hank was nice enough to allow me to take back my play. And I'm actually allowing to not to do it, but obviously now he knows that I have that boomerang in hand. So not the best play. Oh look at that interesting Kismat. Kismat is a very cool enchantment from Oh, and there's a side blast in response. I thought I'm going to count it for three here. Actually, a Kismet is a very interesting enchantment for um, one white and three. Uh, it reads, basically everything comes into play tapped. And obviously when you combine that, and here you see my flying man's coming into play tapped because of the Kismet. And when you combine that with stasis, I mean, it's a great lock. It's a very classic lock. Uh, and I really, really like the art uh, on Kismet. And there's a City of Brassy from Hank. It, it reminds me very much of Arabian Nights. And there's a second kiss, Matt. Why not? Why not? So two kiss mats here on the battlefield. And playing an island here. So my lands are also coming into play tapped. And I believe Gizmat is one of those cards that, that some people say that um, they had some art left from the Arabian Nights set and they re reused some of that art in the Legend set. And Gizmat could be a card that they've uh, reused. And there's a boomerang. Or nice no, taking back the boomerang. We're, we're very... <laughs> it's, it seems this is one of these games where we're not really knowing what to do. And it happens sometimes when you're playing a game too and you've seen each other's decks and um, you kind of know what you have to look out for, but that also means that you start playing a little bit different and not always better. And there is a Serendip Afrit, and there is the Boomerang this time. So I assume it's on the Serendip, or is it on an island? And... It's actually on an island, of course, so I cannot counter. So that's actually pretty smart. And in response, I'm playing my boomerang, and he's playing a counter spell over my boomerang. Okay, so it's a bit of a boomerang war here. Uh, I really love the card, by the way, boomerang. It's so versatile. You can use it in offense and in defense. And let's see what's going to happen here. And he's playing that stasis, and, I mean, this is really bad news. Look at this, playing a balance there. Oh, yuck. Wow, or I should say it's also beautiful. It's very well played here by uh, my opponent. And of course, he also has, look at what he's doing here. He's untapping a Steinvolt, giving me an extra turn that is useless for me. But for him, it means that when he can no longer pay stasis, which is the case, actually, he could, but he's choosing not to. He's now taking that extra turn using a Steinvolt, meaning he gets an extra card as well. And, oh man, Ancestral Recall, are you kidding me? So, um, and he's taking an extra turn here. So this is beautiful. What's happening right now is kind of the dream when you're playing the uh, Time Vault Stasis deck. <clears throat> really, really seeing that beautiful synergy between Stasis and Time Vault. They work together so well. And here he's playing an Abyss to make matters even worse. But he's on five life and I have side blasts in my deck. I'm playing with four side blasts. So there's still some options here for me. What can I do? Playing a Lord of Atlantis and playing in a Lord of Atlantis. So I'm actually going for the creature plan here, hoping um, to deal some extra damage here. Maybe getting him down to below uh, four. It's actually below five. So he's in side blast range. 
Oh, look at that. There's another stasis. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not great. And remember, because of the double kiss mat, well, actually, one kiss mat would have been enough. All my creatures are coming into play tap. So I have to sack now my Lord of Atlantis. Oh, and that stasis is really wrecking me. I don't really think there's an out for me here. And remember, that's the, the, the proxy. So that's a proxy stasis. Uh, time Vault, sorry. So he's now having two Time Volts in play. And what can I do? I mean, he's giving me an extra turn. We talked about this. This is really useful. Uh, useless, I mean. And he's, he's giving me an, another extra turn. And look at my hand. My hand size is growing as well, making the black vice more effective. Playing something out. I'm probably not taking extra turns. He's taking his first extra turn. And that means he's able to untap before me. Um, but I still have a chance. I mean, my hand's full. And maybe there's something useful. Maybe there's a Sionic Blast. Maybe two. Oh, look at this. Wow, playing a Time Walk, taking yet another turn. Still having that one turn left because you see an untapped Time Volt there. And taking the extra turn. Looking for a Twiddle probably here or another Stasis. And he has found a Twiddle there. Untapping again. Taking an extra turn. Here you can really see his deck uh, working in full mode here. Playing an, another Black Vice, meaning I'm getting some extra damage. And there's that killer card. He had it all along. He's playing that Stasis. And that means I'm probably going to die here. I mean, what can I do? I'm on 8 life, got a full hand. Maybe I've got a 1-1. One, one. Maybe I've got a 1-drop here. Yeah, playing the 1-drop just to empty my hand because I know it's, it's pretty useless. And obviously he's just passing turn. He's not worried. And I'm not taking... Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I'm sure I'm, I have to take some damage. Going down to 4... And remember, um, he can still give me extra cards right now, if he, uh, turns if he wants to, even Oh, it's already done. Okay, uh, what I wanted to say is he can say, okay, I'm going to untap my two time volts, going to give you even an extra turn and an extra turn, dealing me even more damage. So I think this was a really, really nice game to kind of demonstrate um, what happens when a combo deck, this combo deck goes off and, and goes on full throttle and Basically, that means problems for me. I mean, he was on five. I didn't need a lot more. I just needed one attack in and one side blast, and he would have been, been dead. But when the combo was there, when the lock was there, I had no opportunity anymore. That means it's 1-1, one, one, and we're going to a third game. Exciting. Uh, so let's go to game number three. Game number three. So will I be able to win here with my blue budget, or is the combo deck Stasis Vault going to be victorious? I have some a slight advantage here, and that is that I can start, and it's very important with an aggro deck. And it, it, it can be very nerve-wracking playing with an aggro deck, because you usually get very close to killing your opponent, but even if you don't, you don't, you know. If, if you run out of steam, there you go, you just get, get killed. And you could see that in game number two, my opponent was on, on five life, but I just didn't make it, and, and then you lose. And here I go again, at least having a one drop, very important here, playing a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. And there's a Mox Pearl, and there's a Howling Mine. Nice, Murfolk of the Pearl Trident, Mox Pearl. So my Murfolk is, is diving for pearls. No, is this a Lord of Atlantis? That would be really sweet. Yes, it is Lord of Atlantis. That means I have a 2-2 two -two now. So a turn two attack for two, I mean, that's good. That's what you want to do. That's what I miss in my Goblin deck, that option, actually. And there are some more Moxes to the table with an Underground Seed. Tapping here for four. Playing the Abyss. Oh, man, that's a problem here. Having to sacrifice a creature. And this is actually a great pull here uh, by Hank. And it's, it's a great tool to use when you're playing an aggressive uh, creature deck. And what am I going to do here? Just played at Mishra's Factory, so am I gonna decide to just let my you know just let my Lord of Atlantis die here and my plan is to use my factory instead? There's a Chaos Orb, even more bad news for me. 
It's not looking good. And I'm playing a boomerang here. What am I boomeranging? In response, he's playing his Chaos Orb. So let's put this in slow-mo. Pretty cool that we're seeing a Chaos Orb flip here. Haven't seen it yet. And there he goes. Let me know if you like these slow-mos, by the way. Or if you think they're annoying. Because, I mean... I can, I, think I can see that as well. But hey, bam, there's a hit. And it was actually an orb flip on my Mistress Factory. So my Mistress Factory is gone here. And it looked like it looks like I've boomeranged the Abyss. So that means that at least my Lord of Atlantis will stay alive here. But things are not looking great for me. So I'm just putting my cards back here because I forgot to count. So I'm first just taking my Black Vice damage. And now I'm drawing the cards. And playing another, a new Mistress Factory. Oh, interesting here. Playing one of my sideboard cards. And this could be, this could be, I mean, this is a killer. Energy Flux. And I've actually boarded in four of them after game one. But I couldn't find one in game two. But this is a killer. I mean, I mean, Hank has some tough choices now. What is he going to do? I, I Personally, I think I would keep my Howling Mind alive. And I would just let the rest die. But obviously I don't know what's in his hand. And I mean I'm not very experienced with um, playing with uh, the Stasis Fold deck. So, And look at that. Okay, he's, he's making that decision as well. So he's keeping that, that Howling Mine around. He's got four cards probably exactly recasting the Abyss. So that means I am going to lose my Lord of Atlantis. At least it enabled me to deal some extra damage here. And he needed all his resources to play that one out. And at least I have a Mishra's Factory. And I recently made a top 10 creatures where I put Mishra's Factory on number one. And playing another one here. And I think games like this, like this really demonstrate why it's, they're so strong. And this is interesting. I'm actually using the colorless mana to activate my factory into an assembly worker instead of using it to pump my worker. And this is why I wanted to play out that double creature. So my tactic with the Abyss really is just going to um, think, okay, I'm just going to feed it um, one creature at a time. Just make sure I have a second creature on the board and drawing two new cards here. Having that Howling Mind feeding me cards obviously is very useful here. Finding that Lord of Atlantis attacking here, pumping my assembly worker. So that means five damage here. And look at his life total. He's gone down to seven. So even though the Abyss is great in a matchup like this, he'll need some more firepower here. And that energy flux is is holding him down as well. He needs he needs some blue power here. He needs the stasis. I mean, it does mean he's going to lose his Howling Mine then probably because of the Energy Flux, but his Stasis can at least help him survive a couple of turns and trying to come up with some kind of tactic. Time Volt Twiddle could help as well. And I mean, I'm still on 19. Oh, this is nice. Finding that Black Lotus, cracking the Lotus, playing a Boomerang. This could be interesting. Boomeranging the Energy Flux... Playing a Twiddle on an island, playing another Twiddle on another land, and oh, interesting, he's, he's playing a Boomerang. That's why he was playing all those Twiddles. I was like, why is he twiddling his land, but he's playing a Boomerang, a uh, Balance, sorry. And <laughs> I mean, I thought he was in a losing position. And then he does something that is really, really, really cool. Emptying his hand, uh, leaving me with only one card. But I still have that double uh, Mishra's Factory here. And I still get to untap and draw. Playing a Cyblast here. And he's down to three and that's the game. That's it. He, he needs a Boomerang or something. Attacking, pumping. And that's the game. Okay. <laughs> wow. What a, what a, what a crazy, crazy couple of plays. I really thought after that well-played balance there that maybe he had a chance to come back. But... This shows you again how incredibly strong the Mistress Factories are. 
You can't counter them, you cannot abyss them. You really need um, a land removal or instant artifact removal. Uh, wow, okay, so I've won this game here and um, I've won the match. I've won the match two to one. I just love these uh, these aggressive builds. Uh, great play. Thank you, uh, HW underscore MTG for this game. Now, if you're interested in this deck, you wanna know more about this deck, um, you can always leave a reply here. Um, here at the at the movie here on youtube or you can try to contact uh hank on his instagram account and, and ask him for a tip or some advice uh for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you'd like to see more games you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen and you can also support the channel very simple uh just become a member share the videos leave a comment, uh, leave a like, let me know what you think of uh, of the content we're making here. Maybe you have a request, maybe you have an interesting deck that you would like to play with on the channel. Uh, you can also let me know, just uh, leave a message right here on YouTube and I'll get back to you. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>